Lord, here we go. Oh, What's Lord. going on, YouTube? How are you guys doing? You know what time it is. It's Thursday. It's a little after 12 o'clock. It is time for you know a lunch break is. brought to you by Rec Tech, powered Rick by D Kingsford. D it's been chicken week all week long here at Rec Tech. We've been doing some of the most delicious, easiest, most chicken. fan favorite chicken recipes that you guys have put chicken. out there for us. But without any further ado, I'm going to throw I it do. over to my main man, your favorite barbecue dad, Jody Flanagan. Welcome to the RecTech Worldwide Headquarters in beautiful Evans, Georgia. I'm your barbecue dad and RecTech expert, Jody Flanagan. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Guys, if you set your notifications, you know that we're live. But if you don't have your notifications set, make sure you set it on your phone because we're live on YouTube right now. Hit that red rectangle. Make sure you subscribe to our channel as well as Kingsford's YouTube channel as well uh, for more amazing content just like this as well as uh, other you know, stuff. But that was Chef John Pinnell. He's on the ones and twos. That's he's right. controlling this. Uh, he's driving this crazy bus, burning bus down a hill. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. It is the continuation of Chicken Week. Uh, Monday, Chef John did some chicken cordon blues. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, Chef Greg did some jerk chicken. What was it? Thighs? Yeah, ch chicken jerk, thighs jerk with chicken red beans thighs. and rice. Right, absolutely. Uh, last night, we had a great episode. We did chicken wing 101. So we told you how to do some amazing chicken wing recipes. Uh, and today, we're going to be doing chicken pot pie. First step, we got to cook this chicken. So let's roll. We're burning those delicious, nutritious even burning, very little ash producing, high BTU producing Kingsford signature pellets. Love those it's a blend pellets. of cherry, hickory, and maple. It's going to give you that smoke and color that you're looking for with that hint of sweetness. But shout out to our friends at Kingsford. A delicious pellet. And I made a mistake the other day and said that these were 17-pound bags. I was mistaken. These are 20-pound bags. That was uh, my fault. Um, I don't know where I came up with that 17 pound number, but these are 20 pound bags. And again, these are going to give us really good BTUs. It's going to burn very evenly, produce great smoke, and also produce very little ash for us. But we're sitting at 425 degrees on the RTB380. It was available at Rectech.com, but I believe we sold out last night sometime, so we really do appreciate it. Yeah, you told everybody last night on After Hours. I told everybody. Buy it now. Right. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, say no more. That's right. Um, but we really do appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, we're cooking our chicken. Those are uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Shout out to Publix, Greenwise brand. We're going to cook those until they get to an internal temperature of about 175 degrees. That's going to be the chicken. For our chicken pot pie. Now I've already got one finished, so don't worry, guys. I know I'm going to finish in time. Now, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. There's a live comment section right, right over here, and then there is a after live comment section down below. So please leave all your hatred over here and down here. We love reading it. It makes our days. It does. Uh, actually, it ruins our days. So leave more hatred. We really <laughs> do appreciate it. But it looks like my good buddy, my friend, my caramel, my caramel. Mocha King I love has it. a question for me. Yeah. Sorry, John. I'm going to open this coming, delicious it's coming, pit burger. It's coming from Do 23 oh, He yes. says, Chef, do you mm. trim that chicken first before you put it I on the grill? I don't. I'm lazy. You guys know me. You can look into my eyes and you can tell I'm a lazy cook <laughs> uh, because I'm telling you. No, but I, I didn't trim that chicken at all. All I did was I seasoned it with a little bit of that Casanova's competition rub. It's got some good seasoning in there. Again, some brown sugar, salt, pepper, garlic, black pepper, celery, salt, spices, onion salt. It's really good seasoning for a chicken. So that's what I did. I seasoned it with that. Uh, it was tacky enough and sticky enough to where I didn't need to put a binder on there. So I just seasoned it up, threw it on the RTB 380 bullseye at 425 degrees. It's going to take about 20-ish minutes to cook. While that is cooking, we need to start uh, essentially our base 
for our pot pie. So I've got the RT700 set at 425 degrees. Again, we're burning that Kingsford Signature Pellet, okay? Kingsford Signature Pellet available pretty much everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. 425 RT700. I've got my cast enamel Dutch oven on the inside, okay? Ooh. I'm gonna put some uh, third of a cup salted butter. Once that starts melting and breaking down, I'm gonna put some onions in this bad boy, uh, about a third of a cup of onions, and uh, we we're gonna let that sweat down. I'm gonna close this up to retain uh, all of that heat on the inside. Now, if, um, if you want, guys, you could substitute uh, pulled pork. You could substitute um, beef brisket. You could substitute pork chops uh, for this. And it could be a pork chop pot pie. This is a very universal recipe. If you want this recipe, we can insert it into your inbox. Just sign up for it at rectech.com forward slash lunch break, and we will aggressively insert it into your inbox. I promise you. I've already given Charlie this recipe, so he already has it. That's right. So we know it's going to get uh, shared. John, it looks like you got a good question from our folks. Yes, right. They want to know, do you have to use chicken thighs? Could you use breast in this recipe? Absolutely. I like using chicken thighs for a couple of different reasons. It's dark meat, so it's going to have a good texture to it. It's also going to have some fat. Uh, I like that fat. Fat equals flavor for me. It's also going to contribute um, that fat. When you cut up these, this chicken or, or, or pull it or however you want to do it, you put it back into uh, our liquid or our base, it's just going to help flavor it. It's going to make it abs taste absolutely delicious. But right now, it's getting bombarded with heat, smoke. So it's absorbing that smoke while it's getting cooked. Again, we're using that signature blend, maple, hickory, and cherry blended together perfectly to give you a delicious smoke flavor. But we really do appreciate you guys for tuning in. We're live on YouTube right now, so make sure you hit that red rectangle and subscribe to our channel. Okay, I've got my cast enamel Dutch oven. You can use a cast iron skillet. You can do this on your stovetop if you'd like, ladies and gentlemen. You do not have to use your pellet grill, but we like using our pellet grill for absolutely everything. Why? Because I don't want to heat up the house. I don't want to heat up the kitchen. True. I love this, this grill is outside, and uh, I don't want to dirty up my kitchen, so that's why we, uh, we like to use our cast enamel mm -hmm. Dutch ovens and our cast iron that's and right. our RT700s. Now, this butter is melted down. I'm going to take about a third of a cup of chopped onions, and we're just going to throw them in there. And we're going to let them simmer, 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 and sweat down. I'm also going to put some garlic in there. I'm a garlic fiend, ladies and gentlemen. I love that garlic flavor. I don't know what it is. I wish I could, like, pinpoint it and explain it with the tip of my tongue. Yeah. But I just can't. There's just something. Garlic does it for me. Yeah, John. it really does. You know, it really, really does it for me. And, again, now's a good time. If you want to, you can go ahead and season this stuff right now and start layering your flavors. That's what it's all about is layering the flavors. We're getting that smoke flavor in there. We're getting that seasoning flavor in there. We're getting that buttery flavor in there. Okay? This is a great base uh, for any uh, pot pie. Okay? Now, I was lazy, and I did buy the, the pre-made pie crust, but that's okay. That's all right. But, again, you can see how beautiful that's looking already. I'm just going to let that start sweating down. Once we can smell that garlic, once that garlic becomes very pungent, we know it's about time uh, to do what we do. You can also, at this time, if you want to, you can add some onions. I've got some gourmet onions. Heck, let's just throw those in there as well. Now, my recipe that you guys are going to sign up for is not going to call for onions. You could also throw in some delicious bacon as well. You know, be a little extra. John, you got a good question for us. Uh, yeah, from Kevin Meredith. Mm, he said that burger is delicious. He said that Thanksgiving's coming up, Jody, and he wants to know what a great seasoning for the outside of his bird would be if he's going to put it on the smoker. Oh, Bubba, I'm so glad <clears throat> that you asked that question. I have the perfect answer to it. That Colden's freaking Greek is an amazing seasoning for any turkey product or poultry product or any Thanksgiving side dish, uh, any stuffing, dressing, anything like that. It's absolutely amazing. I kind of like to mix it. Yeah. I'm a mixer. Yes. So I don't really enjoy the color. Okay. There's not a lot of paprika in that rub. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I like to mix it with one of our red rubs, Ooh. you know, like uh, that Casanova's okay. or that Rossaruski's uh, or that Ron Screaming Pig. That's what I'm talking um, about. And then it, and it the paprika in those rubs will mix with that cold and freaking Greek and give your poultry a great color. Now, it gives it a good color, yeah. but it, it's, it's not that red mahogany that a lot of people are looking for. Right, right. And again, 425 on the RTB380 bullseye. It's that more direct fire grill. You're getting more of that direct fire action. Why is that? Because you've only got one piece of metal between the meat and the That's heat. right. That is okay. right. You can see these, um, these thighs are about ready to turn. 
And again, they're cooking really quick. And you can slow this process down, ladies and gentlemen, and smoke them more if you'd like. Just turn the temperature down and extend that cook. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of cooking chicken thighs at 400 or 425 degrees and overcooking them. You know, cook them past that 165 mark that a lot of folks stop at. That's right. And That's it helps right. retain a lot of moisture that way. But, uh, John, we got any good questions? Yeah. I see your hand up. They want to know, um, could you do this recipe on any of our grills, or do you have to do it Absolutely. on the 700? No, you could. You could most definitely do it on the 7, any of our grills. I could do it in the RTB 380 bullseye if I wanted to. Um, now, uh, again, you wouldn't be able to, to essentially finish off that pot pie of the matador, but you could essentially cook everything in the matador That's like true. we're doing in the skillet, That's right. uh, the Dutch oven, and then transfer everything to your pie crust, put your pie crust in the pellet grill. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing. And again, we're using that Kingsford Signature Blend today. And uh, I believe they're all readily available at Walmarts yeah. as we speak. Yeah. Um, we have reached that threshold, and now they're in every Walmart. That's what I'm so talking about. So shout out about. to, uh, congratulations to the Kingsford folks over there for making that happen. Super readily available to you. Um, and again, not very expensive. Sixteen ninety nine for a twenty pound bag. Hey, you can't beat it. Those were mushrooms you put in there, not onions, right? I put onions and mushrooms uh, in there. Yes, sir. Mushrooms. I just put a handful of mushrooms in there. Okay. Yep, get on here, Sherp. I did want to add another flavor element to it. It's a little bit more um umami. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I love that. No, I'm all about that life. So I got those mushrooms in there, and again, they're all just breaking down and cutting up, and we're just waiting for that garlic just to come flavorized and fragrant and I can almost smell it and those onions are starting to break down really really well so it's almost about time to to mix in our flour but John you got another good question yeah, on that from I the do. folks uh, for, this one comes from uh, Christopher French he said is there any difference in uh, flavor when you use bone in or boneless thighs well absolutely so when you cook that bone is going to release some of that marrow so of course it's going to have a little bit of a different flavor to it uh, me I wanted to be able to pull these off of the grill chop them up and throw them into my cast enamel Dutch oven. So that's why I didn't use uh, bone in skin on. Oh, that's that's why I used boneless, skinless, so go. I could just easily chop them up, transfer them, throw them back in, easy Drop peasy, knowledge. lemon squeezy. That's I right. I love it. But again, we're going to take these above that 165, okay? Uh, I know a lot of folks will stop at that 165 degrees, but we're going to take it over that. And these are about 140 degrees right now, so we've got just a little bit longer. Um, now, Again, it'll take about 20, 25 minutes, um, and we're taking it over that 165. John, you got a good question for us. Yes, Kevin Meredith is asking one more question about a turkey. Please. He wants to know, uh, would you inject a turkey, and if you're going to inject a turkey, what kind of injection do you recommend? Yeah, so uh, I start my planning for my turkey around November 1st, okay? I, I figure out where I'm going to get it from. You know, I really figure out how many people are coming. So I can plan to have the appropriate amount of food for all of those folks. So that's, you know, around November is when I start thinking right. about this. I start thinking about my flavor mm -hmm. profile. You know, do I want it to be savory? Do I want it to be herbaceous? That's do right. I want it to be more citrusy? You know, do you want to do two? Absolutely. Do I want to do, instead of one big bird, do two smaller birds? Go. That is an option for you as well. So with the RT700, we got a bunch of room. Um, but uh, for turkeys, I like brining. Yes and injecting why just because i like the process i like um, getting fully engulfed in that turkey all day long right so i like for there to be a process to it i want each and i want to prepare it like a competition brisket that's what i'm talking about i want about. each and every bite to be moist yes. delicious and over the top good yeah, for sure so that's why i'm going to brine in just a simple you know, Brian, to get some osmosis going, to get it to absorb a lot of that uh, moisture. And then I'm going to inject it. Normally, what I like to do, and you don't have to do this, I actually like to go to my favorite wing joint. Shout out Wild Wing. And I okay. like to get my favorite wing sauce. Oh, yeah, you told me about this last year. And that's, that's right. what I will inject my turkey with because my, wing, my favorite wing sauce is essentially butter. And, ran and ranch seasoning. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. So there's nothing wrong with that. You guys, that Tony Sachery's Cajun right. butter mm, injection, that that's great good. as well. Yeah, that stuff's good. You know, you can make a spicy type of butter. You can make an herby type of butter. Uh, but again, if you're injecting, you know, you need just need to sift out that stuff because your injector, you know, may get clogged up and you may not be able to force that into your bird. But it's totally up to you. But I like to overdo it for Thanksgiving. That is the one holiday that I will overdo and uh, over amplify and make sure that 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 uh, 
protein tastes absolutely amazing for my friends and relatives that come over. Um, but my turkey is the only thing that I will brine and inject just like my competition meats. Uh, anything else, I'm either going to brine or either I'm going to inject, okay? But savory stuff. You can go sweet. You can throw some cinnamon in there and give it a, you know, that's a good a, That's spin. a good tip. That's a good um, tip. You know, possibilities are endless. It really is. Nine times out of ten, you know, most folks will put some herbs on the inside, inject it with some citrus. That'll be good. Um, or vice versa, you know, put some herbs on the, uh, citrus on the inside and inject it with some delicious herb butter. You got a lot of options. Yeah, you really so, do. And you got a lot of time. So, you know, take the time, ask your family, ask your friends, relatives, hey, what kind of turkey do you want this year? Uh, and start planning now, uh, especially around that November 1st time. John, you got another good question. We, I love we, that. We've got some foodies out here today, Jody. We've got some foodies, okay? okay? So the first question is coming from Scott Sharp, and he asks, why are you taking the chicken thighs to a higher temp when you're going to put them in a pot pie? That's right. I just want to make sure that they're super, super moist um, because, again, everything's going to be cooked. Uh, when we put it into that pot pie, uh, essentially all we're doing is cooking the outside. Um, but yeah, I want this chicken to be super moist no matter what. So we were about ready. And again, I'm speeding this up a little bit. I would like for it to be a little bit more bubbly bubbly. But right now we're going to add uh, a third cup of all-purpose flour and we're going to mix it up and we're going to get it fully incorporated. There we go. You could also add some more seasoning at this time right now if you wanted to guys. Or mix seasoning in with that flour. But we're, we're making our base right now, almost a roux. Um, but this roux has got onions and mushrooms in it that make it absolutely delicious. Delicious. So we're going to let that cook. We're going to let that um, flour brown up a little bit and get absolutely nice and uh, kind of nutty. John, you got another good question? Yeah, Gilbert asked. Hold on, wait. And I know there are a lot of folks out there asking what kind of beer I'm drinking on today. And today I have chosen a delicious Bitburger Premium German Pilsner. They're delicious. Available. Uh, at a lot of retailers. Guys, I would suggest that uh, you go check out these delicious Bitburger Pilsners. And they also hooked it up with some of this uh, Feist beer, Fest beer uh, for Oktoberfest. So shout out to Bitburger. Oh, we really awesome. do appreciate that. Yeah. Guys, if you're looking for a delicious, crisp, yeah. tasty, refreshing, refreshing, you know, not over hoppy, not super crazy you know um, again this is a pilsner it's supposed to be smooth i'm a more smooth beer drinker um, so this is uh, some of my go-to shout you're out to our friends at bitburger for hooking it up yeah, georgia crown locally guy. in yeah. georgia you're just a smooth guy all around Jerry. okay so second question comes from gilbert That's a good beer he asked gilbert doesn't brining affect the crispy skin of a turkey absolutely absolutely if you do not dry that bird off that's right if you do not Put herb butter up underneath that skin. Mm. If you don't separate the skin from the meat, put herb butter up oh, underneath there. If you don't dry right it now. before you put your seasoning on there. Yeah. Yes. Moisture is the enemy of crispy. And again, we're keeping it above mm. 300 degrees. So that's step one to crispy skin. Mm. Keep it above 300 degrees. Step two is to separate it from the meat. Mm -hmm. Step three is to put herb butter mm -hmm. in between the skin and the meat. Step four, to dry mm -hmm. the skin. Step five, season it mm -hmm. heavily with a dry rub on the outside, and that is gonna guarantee us to have absolutely amazing crispy skin. Um, those five tips right there, John, right? Hallelujah, preach, Jody. Like all, like Bring those it home, are, those, those are, are the tips that you need. Again, you could also jacquard that skin. Ooh. What does that mean? That means uh, there, there's a, a, a French thing called a jacquard, and it's actually like a meat tenderizer. It's got a lot of different needles. sharp blades, yeah. needles on it. Uh, so that'll also, if you jacquard that skin, that'll also help and Jody, get you good crispy you bite actually, through skin. You actually forgot the thing that you probably do every year to your turkey, What's which that? is spatchcock. Absolutely. So a lot of times I will spatchcock my turkey. That's going to help me cook it a lot evenly. Um, and again, make sure that everything is nice and moist. Or, you know, John, I've even gone as far as breaking the whole turkey down oh. and pulling off the pieces when they were done. Really? So that way they definitely, you know, it doesn't all finish at the same time, but you definitely pull it all off at the right time. That's pretty cool. Ensuring that your, uh, all of your turkey meat is going to be uh, delicious and moist. Bill Meeks asked, do you brine the turkey if you spatchcock it? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And again, hitting it with a little bit more of that Casanova's competition rub available at rectech.com, R-E-C-T-E-Q. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the Kingsford and Rectech's YouTube channel for more amazing content like this. Get on in here, Sherp. So this um, flour and butter mixture has turned into a little bit of a roux for us, and it's starting to get nice and nutty. So our next step.
is going to be to add slowly our milk. And we're not using chicken uh, broth. We're using chicken stock today, okay? okay? So we're going to slowly mix both our chicken broth stock and uh, our milk in slowly. Now, now the reason why we wanted to use uh, chicken uh, stock and not chicken broth uh, is because I wanted that good, delicious, chickeny flavor. And go. again, John, you were explaining to me the difference between stock uh, and broth this morning. That's right. Stock is made with bones, and they have little pieces of the chicken left on the bone. Right. Broth is not. Is not made with any so bones. So I, I put in, and again, this recipe, sign up for it, rectech.com forward slash lunch break. But I put in about two cups. I don't think I put about two cups of chicken broth in there. But I need about two cups of chicken broth and about a half to three quarters cup milk. And this is going to be absolutely perfect base for us. But again, 425, set it the whole time. Just mix it. And once it starts breaking down, once it starts getting all bubbly, bubbly, uh, again, that's going to take a little while. So it's going to take probably about five to ten more minutes uh, for it to, to get like that. We've let our chicken cool down a little bit. Again, it's still hot as heck. But now I'm just going to chop this up and get it ready to go in our pot pie. John, uh, I Doug, think you got another question. Well, Doug Wilkerson said uh, the first time he had Bitburger was in Germany in 87 when he was with the U.S. AF. Yeah, the Bitburger is actually one of the oldest breweries in the world, over 200 years old. So you know they're doing something right. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is, is they're they're trying to be innovative. They're okay. trying to change it up. You know, all they used to make was the Bitburger Pilsner. Now they've teamed up with Sierra Nevada, uh, and they've actually ha they have a uh, delicious beer uh, that they teamed up with Sierra Nevada to make. That's what this I'm fest about. beer uh, is actually something new for them as well. So they're being super innovative. You know, their owner, um, he's, a, he's an older gentleman, but he really likes the beer industry. Uh, that's what he's always been in. And again, the Bitburger is a family-owned brewery in Germany. That's awesome. Like, uh, the owner now currently, uh, he actually had to go and work for other breweries all over the world in order to be considered for the job that what? he has now. Yeah, I didn't so know they got it like that, huh? Yeah, I mean, he's they, they, uh, and the brewmaster and him, they've spent time in China, you know, Germany, you know, uh, uh, South America, all over the world brewing beers everywhere. So they know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but they, you know, again, they wanted to team up with an innovative company just like us because that's what they're trying to do in 2021 is be super innovative and uh, bring more uh, light to the uh, German beer market. That's but awesome. It, but they've been doing it for forever, so that's why I like them and because it, it tastes delicious. Crisp, clean, not overdone. John, you got another good question? They are just love, love, loving And you guys see, I'm just, right just now, cutting Jerry. this up, you know, julienne in it, essentially, just good long threads. Again, I'm a texture eater, so, you know, I want a good, I want, a ch I want chunks of chicken, you know, when I'm, uh, when I'm biting into my pot pie. What about you, John? Do you like big chunks, oh, or yeah, do you, you like know, it to be more pulled you know and like kind of integrated? Chunky. You know I like it chunky. And that's why I like to do it on the RTB380, because you get that crispiness. Right. You get that crunchiness, almost peanut butteriness. <laughs> <laughs> no, that crispy crunchiness yeah. um, from the outside, you know, because you're getting more of that direct fire that's action. Right. Uh, Which that, helps with the texture when you're eating it. It gives it a little something. That's what I'm saying, yeah. absolutely. And it also that. kind of flavorizes it, too. Mm, you know, those, uh, those char. brown charred yeah, parts buddy. absolutely are going to emit a delicious flavor. But Most again, we're trying definitely. to keep a good, nice working space here. Done with my onions. We're going to add some thawed frozen vegetables. That's right, thawed frozen vegetables. Um, <laughs> because they were picked at their peakness. That's what I'm talking John, about. John, you got another good question? We're rolling right along, bro. We are rolling right along. So, Jody, if these people want to find out about new products when they're about to release, when we're stocked oh, up yeah. on Look old items, viscosity. what do they that need to do? To Where do they need to go? Already. The, uh, John, if they want to find out about new products, new releases, new things on the docket, excuse me, they need to sign up for the newsletter at rectech.com. That's R-E-C-T-E-Q.com. Just scroll all the way down to any page and put your email in where it says sign up for the newsletter, and you too can find out about all the behind-the-scenes access, all of the cool stuff going on here at Rectech. Now I want to try this Fest beer. And again, they brought it and delivered it cold, so you can't let it go bad no, or let it warm up. you can't let it go up. bad, Jody. Cheese and crackers. Now, this Fest beer, I've been looking forward to tasting it. Okay. The, uh, the stores that actually had it here locally were sold out of it because it is so good. So uh, shout out to our Bitburger friends for this delicious Fest beer. And again, it's their first time making this Fest beer. Okay. They've Le tried it before, they, but they didn't bring it to market. They made okay. sure it was good before. Okay. So. All right, let us know. Give us your honest opinion. Damn. 
put a little bit of that in pot pie. <laughs> it's that good, huh? It is good. That's um, what I'm you know, it's pilsnery, but it, you know, it also has something else. And again, I, I apologize, Bit Burger, for not being able to uh, perfectly explain it. But it is a delicious, crispy, wintry, you know, October, November, December kind of drinking beer. Oh, Almost Oktoberfest, but more, more festy. You know, like a, 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 a uh, kind of like that orange. Peely, oh, yeah, Hefeweizens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Hmm. It looks delicious. And they sent plenty, so everybody gets to have some. Oh, yeah. So that's, all, that's awesome, right? Shout out to you, Bitburger. Thank but, you so much. Uh, I think we gave away something last week. I think. But we, we need to work out how we're going to do How that. we're going to do it from now on. So we won't be giving anything thing away this week, but we will be meeting and making sure that we're able to bring you. That's right. Giveaways for our for Thursday sure. live YouTube show. For sure. And uh, I don't know how many folks are out there watching, but thank you guys so much for tuning in, for watching, for sending us emails. Folks. Huh? 160 wow, folks. Wow, that's awesome. That is. Uh, guys, if you could share this video all over all your social media, it, it would mean the world to both John and I. That's for how we sure. get paid. We really do appreciate it. And uh, uh, thank you so much for putting up with us. I know sometimes we can ramble on and sometimes we can get a little uh, long in the tooth, <laughs> uh, but we like to have fun and we really, we really appreciate you guys uh, supporting us and, uh, you know, reaching out to us and emailing us and letting us know how good we're doing. And again, I want to remind everybody that we are doing, uh, John, what do we call it? <sighs> next week, not, not next week, but fan, the week after, uh, fan favorites. That's it. So we want you to put in the comment section, both the live and uh, comments all the time, what you would like to see us cook. And again, we're going to share that with the barbecue ladies as well. You know, maybe we can uh, let them know what you guys would like to see them cook too. So let us know in the comment section of all of our videos for this week and next week what you would like to see us cook. I know a lot of folks have said stuff like pork steaks, uh, ham steaks. Yeah. Uh, I know there were a couple other things in the docket. There that was I've a lot of uh, holiday food, Thanksgiving Day food, turkeys, uh, stuffings. Um, someone has said something about like a mac and cheese week I thought I saw cool. in one of them. Yeah, so we could easily do that. You never we could know. Do, uh, you tons never and know. tons of mac and cheeses. But again, I'm just letting this get all bubbly, bubbly, and start to thicken up. Once it starts to thicken up really, really well, which it's got some good viscosity right now, I'm going to go ahead and add... Uh, about two cups of these frozen frozen veggies, okay? And then this is going to be about three pounds of chicken. And you can go less. I like going more. I'm a meaty guy. I, I like a lot of meat. Yeah. And if you want it to be more saucy, you know, uh, put more chicken stock, chicken broth, or milk in there, and that'll help it be more saucy. But again, this is good. This is, needs to thicken up a little bit more. But again, once it thickens up, I'll show you in just a little bit how we're going to put it in our pot pie. Now, John, if you could, I yeah. actually put my pie crusts in the oh, cooler right there. Okay. If you could bring them to me so I can show the folks how this is done. Now, again, I cheated. I'm sorry. I bought the pre-made pie crust. <laughs> Ooh, you almost knocked over the beer. <laughs> that was a perfect day. It was not. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm showing you chicken pot pie today. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. How easy is this, though? So easy. Jenny, we got a question from Please. Mudtar 33. Mudtar. Mudtar 33. He says, <laughs> yeah. I like the direct fire aspect of the RTB 380, but how does it do as a smoker? Oh, man, I've made my two best briskets I've ever made in my life. Uh, on the RTB 380 overnight here at work, not monitoring it, letting it go by itself. And again, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi capability, so you, you know, you can't turn it up, down, on, or off for anywhere in the world, and you can't monitor uh, the meat um, from the app. But you can most definitely turn it up, down, on, or off, uh, you know, from that controller. But you don't have that Wi-Fi capability. But you definitely have the the PID is what really matters, holding that temperature good and strong. Again, the PID controller that we use in all of our grills is the gold standard when it comes to temperature control, okay? It's going to hold that temperature good and strong for you. It's going to think on the fly. Every second, it's going to take a reading, and uh, it's going to get you where you want to be. That's what I'm talking about. But, John, uh, uh, what have you got planned for tonight? Late Night Munchies. It is going to be an awesome show. It's, well, I don't want to. I don't want to tell. I don't want to tell too too much. I want y'all to tune in. That's right. It's going to be on Instagram, eleven o'clock. Rectech Grills, a Rectech's Instagram page, eleven o'clock. Rectech underscore official. You definitely, definitely want to check it out. Something so this sweet. Is our top. Something sweet coming off that grill, Jody. Of course it is. Yeah. Because because you're making it. You're a sweet sweet meat kind of guy. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Sweet I like meat. sweet heat. 
Um, but again, these are our pre-made pie crust. I didn't show you guys the uh, Pillsbury brand. Two crusts come in one box. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, a lot of people Don't say this is their favorite it. cheat, the right. pie crust. You, I mean, right you there. have They're to. Delicious. And again, a really cool cheat for this is if you want to take you a pint glass, cut little uh, small circles, and do mini pot pies in like a muffin Ooh, tin. That's a great idea. Absolutely. And they'll cook a little bit quicker for you, too. That's awesome. Um, but I've also got some egg wash here because we want the top to be really, really pretty. So once our pot pie cooks down, gets all bubbly, bubbly, starts to thicken up, which it's, it is now. It is not as thick as I would like it. But I'm not going to ruin this and put this super, super wet liquid in there. I'm actually going to go the more direct flame route. Okay. And I'm going to put it on the RT B380 bullseye to, to help it heat up just a little bit it's quicker. And that's okay. I could also turn this grill up to full if yeah. I wanted to, but I've got a little bit of grease on my drip pan, so I don't want to turn it up to full and cause a grease fire. So. Ah, look at you dropping Absolutely, a little and I'm just knowledge. trying to speed it up a little bit. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but I do have a delicious finished product right here for you. Get on in here, shirt. This is what you want it to look like. Oh, and that looks great, doesn't goodness, it? Goodness, Jody. I think I did a pretty good job. Look like Betty Crocker over there. But you see, put two slits in it, allow it to breathe a little bit. And we, we pulled this off about 15 minutes ago. Nah, it was more about 20 minutes ago, but... It looks absolutely amazing. It's going to taste good. And again, you want to taste it as you cook it. You know, as you're building those flavors, you want to make sure that it's seasoned properly. And Jody, that was a seven quart cast enamel pan we're using, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So yeah, six or seven. But I'm going to season one more time with that Casanova's. You can't go wrong. Can't over season. And mm. then again, once it mm -hmm. gets super thick all i'm gonna do is just dump this liquid into this pie pan pie crust i'm going to top it just like so and what i like to do is i like to actually fold in and you guys can see how we did the crust right there we actually folded the bottom part on top of the top part that's a good trick then we put our egg wash. It wouldn't have been this pretty if we didn't use that egg wash, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen. But it turned out great. And again, I'm just going to wait till that one to thicken up. I want to cook it, make it look pretty. But let's see. That's still a little, little warm. But I'm going to go ahead and dig into this. What say you, Chef John? I say dig in, my friend, as long as you're cutting me a piece. Yes, sir. But smash that share button, guys. Give us a like. Give us a love. Make sure you follow us on all social media. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as Kingsford's YouTube channel because we've got a lot of amazing content right. coming up for you in the future. Now this one, we had some leftover pulled pork. So I made a pulled pork pot pie. That's what I'm talking about. As my example. All right, Jenny, we got a lot of uh, people out here talking about what we should do for um, that okay. Let me know. Appreciation Week. That we got great. Turkey Week. We have, well, that's coming up for Thanksgiving, right? Yep. Yeah, we have got, um, where were the other ones? Another one person said Turkey Week. So, someone said oh. all sides, holiday sides. Okay. We've got Mexican street food, breakfast wow. uh, week. That um, great. Smoked chili, stuffed peppers we week. We just did brisket chili. We sure enough did. Beef Wellington week, beef ribs week. A couple beef ribs, buddy. I like it. I like it. We could do a ribs week and just do all kinds of ribs. Dude, that would be awesome. I like that one. But fan mm -hmm. favorite week will be we were going to pick, what, six or seven recipes yeah. from your examples, from your suggestions. And we might actually send you something really cool for suggesting something really cool for us to cook. So make sure you watch all the videos and suggest as many cool things as possible. Because if we pick, you, if we pick your thing, we might actually send you something really cool and uh, to thank you for doing that for us. Again, you're doing all the work for us. We're not doing the work. You're suggesting the awesome stuff, yeah. so we need to pay you somehow. Rachel, you want to take this? You could do some pics with that one if you want to. And I'm going to leave this one just like this, too. But this pot pie couldn't be easier. Again, I'm sorry. I cooked a 
pie, uh, pulled pork pot pie, but again, it's chicken week and we're cooking a chicken pot pie right now. <laughs> We've got it on the RTB380. I'm gonna set it on riot mode. What that's gonna do is it's gonna heat up quicker. Oh, here we go. Get on in there, Sherb. You can see some bubbly bubbly in there. Some thickening, see, that viscosity that is that starting happened to get thicker. Fast. I'm telling you, you can't sleep on that bullseye. But again, all the char, all of that delicious uh, bark that we've got from the chicken thighs, um, from that direct fire cooking RTB 380, it's going to taste absolutely amazing. Mm. Add another element of flavor That's to that right. chicken pot pie. Sure enough. John, we got any good questions or anything before we yeah. dip out? I know we got to taste this. Yeah, they're just talking about what we should do. We got pot roast week, Euros oh, yeah. week, wild game week, um, all tacos of those El Pastor week, mac and cheese week. They're going crazy. Well, not, out here. And again, guys, don't suggest a week, suggest a day of the fan favorite week. That's right. So if you've got a specific mac and cheese that you want us to cook, like we cooked a lobster mac and cheese this morning just to do it. If that's what you want, that's what we'll do. That's uh, what if I'm you want us to about. cook a crab meat mac and cheese, let us know. That's what we'll do. Again, we want those cool suggestions. Uh, and if you've got like a source for ostrich meat Ooh. or any of that crazy meat that you can't find, let us know. We'd love to get it um, from somebody in the Rectech family for sure. That would be cool. I'm loving that. Now, this, again, uh, it's going to take about 30 to 40 minutes to brown up at 375 degrees, okay? So once we take it out of the pot, put it in our pie crust, put it back in the grill. It's gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes to brown up. Again, we used a, a egg wash to make it look even prettier, mm -hmm. but I think uh, I knocked it out of the park. It looks amazing. You really did kill it, buddy. It looks great. But shout out to everybody watching right now. We really do appreciate you. It does mean the world to us. If you have any questions, please ask us in the comment sections down below uh, or over here to my left, you're right. Uh, you can also email us. I'm Jody at Rectech.com, J-O-D-Y at R-E-C-T-Q.com. He's Chef John at Rectech.com, and then Chef Greg is Chef Greg at Rectech.com. Don't hesitate to ask us any questions. If you guys uh, uh, need any guidance in any recipes or anything right. like that, no, we're here that's for what you. we're here for. Yeah, totally, Absolutely. 100%. We love hearing but, from you. But a shout-out again. Smash that share button. Give us a like. Give us a love. Follow me on all social media at BBQ Dad. Jody, BBQ, D-A-D, J-O-D-Y on all social media. He is Chef John Pinella on all social. We really do appreciate a like and follow. John, any good questions before we dip out? Man, they're just saying everything looks great, and you're going to have to go back through this. this. You're going uh, to have to go back pork. through this and look at all of the suggestions for the different days. Yeah, shoot, yeah. Is it mm. delicious? It looks so good on camera. Pulled pork, man. Oh, my goodness. Can't go yes. wrong with that crispy skin. Mm. Shoot, yeah. Man, that crispy skin. Wow. And just that delicious pulled pork, leftover pulled pork. We I didn't even it. cook it. Yeah, you hammered that one. Mm. That's delicious. Mm. Mm. More. So good. Wow. Mm. But again, guys, easy mm. peasy, lemon squeezy. Sign up for this recipe, rectech.com forward slash lunch break. Fill out all the info, check all the boxes, and we will slide this right all up in your inbox. Um, I'm Jody Flanagan, Barbecue Dad, and from everybody here at the Rec Tech Worldwide Headquarters, God bless you, God bless the United States of America, and we will always see you at, at the, the Rec Tech. Do, 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 Rec Tech Lifestyle. Set it and come get it when the sun starts going.